welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back to another installment. So in tonight's video, um, this is something that I was going to do a long time ago, but I got distracted. And it's it's come around again because I've often seen recently um, a couple of people that asked me questions about this. Uh, and they were getting awfully confused um, about how to proceed and how to do it. And th don't, there are lots of blogs and there are lots of articles um, about this particular method. Um, I'm going to roughly follow um, this particular article here, um, which is in the, the knowledge base. Uh, obtaining a vSphere certificate from a Microsoft Certificate Authority. So we already have a Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services or Certificate Authority um, in our Active Directory here that issues certificates for cyrus-consultants.co.uk. So there's already a big tick for that. Um, and I'm going to follow a, a method um, that I've been doing for a while. Um, and in tonight's video, we're going to replace the certificates on our ESXi hosts in our EE lab. Now, I'm sure you've all seen this annoying not secured, uh, and you've seen this, your connection is not private, uh, privacy error certificates in your browsers. I find them a pain in the ass. Um, there are big debates. Um, if you um, discuss this with VMware administrators, um, most VMware administrators will actually turn around and say this is a complete waste of time really replacing the certificates because you very rarely actually um, connect directly to the host. Um, you know, if you are applying security standards, uh, they'd be in lockdown mode, so you wouldn't be accessing them via the HTML client anyway. Um, so what is the point really of replacing the certificates on them uh, when they're added to VMware vCenter server? Uh, because that's the way that you'd be accessing the host via VMware vCenter server. Um, and in the next video, we'll replace the certificate on that as well. Uh, this is our current connection to uh, vCenter server 8A in our, on our EE lab, which also turns around and says it's not secure. So we'll do that in the next video. Today, we're gonna do um, the hosts. So I'll leave it up to you, really, whether or not that you want to you do your you. I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not that you want to replace the certificates in your lab um, on your hosts, um, or whether or not that you want to continually uh, put up with the uh, annoying uh, your connection is not private. Um, you could also uh, install the certificate. Uh, in your workstation, which would obviously negate that error message as well if you did that. But in tonight's video, I'm going to show you how we roll our own certificates um, using a Microsoft Active Directory um, Certificate Authority or Microsoft Directory Active Directory Certificate Services. So the first thing I'm going to do really is nothing really to do with the SXI host. Um, it's more to do with Notepad and a product called OpenSSL. Now, OpenSSL is a download, it's available for Windows, it's available for Linux. A lot of the time it's actually already on Linux. So um, use whatever operating system that you are familiar with. But what you will need um, is a default template. Now, this is our default template. And I'll put a copy of this um, in the description. Um, so that you can copy and paste this um, and then basically you can use this as a template. Um, clearly, obviously, you want to change the, uh, in the subject alternate name here, the things you need to change are obviously the server name. So in our particular case here, ours is ESXi001. Uh, it's IP address and it's FQDN. Uh, and ours is ESXi 001 dash cyrus dash consultants.co.uk. And then down here, distinguished name, uh, then you put in your country name, uh, obviously in the UK, so it's GB. Uh, my state or province is the East Riding of Yorkshire. Uh, my locality name is York. I think you sort of kind of get a fair idea. Organization name is Cyrus HQ, and the uh, organizational unit name 
Um, in fact, actually, it's probably the wrong way around, actually. The organization name um, is, is that. There we go. So I've spotted a problem already. Goes well for this video, then, doesn't it? Anyway, our, our unit name is Cyrus HQ. Uh, it could be R&D, uh, could be sales, uh, research, etc. And our common name is ESXi001 Cyrus Consultants.co.uk. Now, it is important that the friendly name of the certificate matches the FQDN that you actually basically uh, connect to the host on. So, if you're going to put in your browser, uh, ESXi 001 donkey.com, and you try to access and you use that in your browser, um, you're going to get a not secured uh, or a what is it called again? Not secured or yeah, not secure. Uh, so the FQDN that we access has got to match a friendly name with certificate, or you will get a not secure message. So the first thing we need to do is to create our our template, which I've done and I've actually basically changed. So for the moment, I've 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 um I've done that for the moment, and then the next thing that we need to do is we need to bob uh, to. I was going to say an SSH shell because I'm getting confused between Windows and Linux and Unix and ESXi. Um, so we just need to access a command prompt uh, on our uh, Windows desktop uh, or Windows server. So this is a command that you need to use. And again, I will paste this into the description. So open SSL dash uh, exe req space dash new space dash nodes dash out rui dot csr so that's our uh, certificate request uh, dash key out rui dash oriz dot key that's our private key so that's important that we keep that because we're going to need that later dash config um, and i like to um, you can just use open ssl dash cfg and you can just keep editing that file and changing it if you like um, i actually like to um, keep I like to create a folder um, with the host name, and then I actually basically create the CFG, the configuration, the template file, if you like, uh, within that folder. So followed by enter. And if all is good, then we should end up, uh, I'm going to have a little look here in our our bin, we should have an RUI-CSR and an RUI-ORIG-Key. So there's our private key that was created at 13th November 2021. And 13th November 2024, 1931 is our RUI.CSR. Uh, now, um, I like to convert the private key um, to an RURSA format key. Um, and you do that effectively by, again, openssl-exe, rsa-in, rui-org.key. So that's our original key that was created before. Dash out, rui.key. So now uh, we've got three new files, the original key, rui.csr and rui.key. Now, I like to copy those or move those into my uh, template uh, or storage host folder. So I've just basically cut and pasted the rui.csr, the rui.key, and the rui.org.key. We're not going to use that one anymore. We're just going to use these two keys here. So the next thing that um, I need to do is I need to open up. I'm going to edit that with Notepad. So this is our certificate request. So I'm going to use uh, Notepad Plus to open this text file. And I'm going to copy this certificate request uh, to our certificate server. Um, so if you've got an Active Directory certificate service or CA, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and I'm going to click request a certificate. 
I'm going to, in this particular case, submit advanced certificate request. So you may normally, um, if you don't have your own internal CA, then you may decide basically to send that certificate signing request uh, to a third party for them to create you a uh, certificate. So I'm going to click advanced request. I'm going to paste my certificate in there. I'm actually basically going to select that. Uh, obviously, you can see that we've been doing this a while since B3 is six. So I'm going to basically use that as a certificate template. And there's one thing that I keep forgetting. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really do this enough, or I do it every two years when the certificates expire. Um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to copy the subject alternate name. Now this is a this is a I'm going to say this is a thing for Microsoft CA, um, but it's also a requirement for majority of students now that they have a subject alternate name. Um, otherwise, you will still get the not secure problem. Uh, and I think SANs or subject alternate names, I think was something that Chrome had a dealing with. So again, I'm going to go back to my um, Notepad++ and I'm just going to basically paste my FQDN um, in, in there. So I've pasted my certificate request that came from the um, the CSR uh, that we opened up, uh, which is in our notepad here. So this is our certificate signing request, the CSR. I've copied and pasted that into this request. I've selected a certificate template for v36.x, and I've put in some additional attributes for the FQDN ESXi 001-Cyrus-Consultants.co.uk. And I'm going to click Submit. Now here, um, we have our CA set up to automatically issue certificates. So I'm not waiting for an administra administrator uh, to grant that certificate request. It's doing it automatically for me. So now what I need to do is to download the base encoded certificate. So I'm just going to say download and I'm going to save that uh, to my. I'm going to save that to that location and I'm going to have a little look here. And we can see it here. Cert new dash CER. So that is my actual certificate. Um, that I now need to place inside our ESXi server. What I'm now going to do is to, just to make things a little bit easier and to stop confusing myself, because as I said, I don't do this enough really, and, and I forget things. So I'm going to copy the cert new dash CER, and I'm going to call that RUI, RUI uh, dash CRT, because these are the files that are required uh, when we copy them to our ESXi host. Now, you can, at this stage, um, open this certificate, and you can just check that you've actually got it right before basically going to all the trouble of putting it uh, on your ESXi host, and then actually basically finding that you've completely cocked it up, and you've got to go off and create the certificate. Um, and go to the certificate authority again and go through all that palaver again. So it does actually tell me that it's issued to esxi-cyrus-consultants.co.uk. So from here, that looks to me like that is the correct FQDN. It was issued by cyrus-consultants-pleco-ca, valid from today to 13th 11th 2026. If I look at the details, I just want to check again the issuer. Uh, check is valid. Check is valid too. Uh, again, check the the subject, the host name, etc. Looks okay. And then more importantly, down here, just to check that the subject alternate name also basically matches the FQDN as well. So when we've done all that, 
and we've ensured ourselves that that is clacker then what we need to do then are the only files now that we're interested in we're interested in the private key and we're interested in the certificate so we're interested in rui.crt and rui.key i'm just going to have a little look at that file there because i'm wondering if i've got a comma in there i have i can't see again it's those um it's those bloody little thunderbugs in fact i've got one up here um not alive it's dead behind the screen but anyway it looks like a thunderbugs anyway so that is rui dash crt and that is rui dash key so those are the two files that we need to overwrite replace or put on our esxi host so let's just go back again once again so this is our esxi host and at the moment if we look at the certificate we look at the certificate details it tells me that the common name is correct for the organization is vmware and its organization unit is vmware engineering and the common name is vmware engineering so so we can see here that the certificate uh, and it says this is on the 18th of june so we're expecting that to change and currently it says it's it's not secure um, and how we do this quite simply is um, i've got an ssh session i don't need that for the moment uh, but i have a win scp session so the directory in question is called etc slash vmware slash ssl and again you will see two certificates rui dash crt that is the certificate and rui dot key is the private key both of those are a pair a secret key and a public key so i'm going to copy those i'm going to create a new directory and i'm going to call it backup belts and braces just in case that we completely cock up here we can just drop those certificates back and all will be well so there we go i have successfully um so i'm going to basically go to our we go to our esxi i'm going to pick up the rui.crt and I'm going to pick up the key. So that's our certificate and that's our private key, both of which I've required. And I'm going to drag and drop them over to our ESXi host. So there's our new certificate and there is our new matching key that basically is a pair. So now comes the magic. Well, it's not really magic. Um, we could do this from ILO. Uh, we could do this from SSH. Um, you could restart the host but it's a bit severe really to be honest with you because none of this really is going to affect our virtual machines um so i'm just going to restart effectively the agents or the network management agents on the host by basically saying services to ssh space restart and i'm just basically going to let that run through and while that runs through i'm just going to get a, a grab of espresso while it's still warm you have to excuse me while i do this And once all the services have started or restarted, then our host uh, will be using the new certificate. And we can connect back to our host. Uh, we can refresh the browser and we can see whether or not that it's worked or whether or not that it's all gone ping tong. So if I just click refresh now, now, sometimes you don't automatically see um that there has been a change because you know there's some caching that's gone on um so all i've done there basically is just close that session uh, and restarted that session and i think you can clearly see now that um our not secured has disappeared now You've also got to understand as well that if you don't have the CA installed on your workstation, which we do, because, of course, this is an internal CA to us. This is not known at the rest of the world. Um, so if somebody actually came here with their laptop and tried to connect to our ESXi host, they would still get not secured because there's no trusted CA uh, on their device. But if they went to pleco.sarovstash.consultants.co.uk, they could download our CA to their laptop 
so their certificate would be would be then trusted and that's really why you're paying a third party um for a certificate because they have got their ca deployed across the planet within windows updates etc um so i can look at that certificate it tells us the connection is secure and we can look at the validation and now it's telling us that <coughs> um the common name is esxi001 there's our fqdn the organization is sars computer consultants limited i think i've got a typo there as well i've popped c-o-p-n-p-u-t-e-r let's just actually go back and have a little look at the um if i was doing this live somebody could have turned around and said oh you idiot you've actually spelt it wrong yeah i did look i put an extra p in um not really that that's actually gonna gonna, <laughs> gonna affect um uh the security really obviously but you can see the common name was issued by sarastas consultants dot pleco dot ca um so now i can log in quite happily to our host and we're secure now there's one other thing that you might see of course uh as we've changed the certificate on our host um previously um our vcenter server Previously, our vCenter server would have been. <coughs> Apologies, I've got a frog coming back. Um, so before you would have seen that we've actually connected um, our vCenter server to our hosts. And at that point, it would have actually basically approved the certificate first time around. Well, we've now changed the certificate, so that's why it's actually disconnected it. But if we just actually basically and it turns it will take you can set there authenticity of the host certificate is not verified um so if we just basically now log back in with the username and password or the root username and password uh now we store that certificate now I could have done this the, the the right way around or the approved way um that if you update the ca first on your vcenter server then it knows about the CA on that certificate and you wouldn't actually basically get that that message. Um, so, OK, you can see that we're back in business now. Um, these error messages here about cannot synchronize the host will disappear eventually. When it's had time to wake up. Uh, the same with quick stats, you know, that's going to disappear as well when those stats are updated. Um, so that's it. That's 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 how easy it is to create um and update or change or replace um your ssl certificate on your esxi host um so again thanks very much for watching this episode of hancock's vmware half hour i look forward to you coming back uh, in the future and looking at other episodes of uh, hancock's vmware half hour Again, if you're watching on Experts Exchange, then please endorse. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, then please uh, thumbs up and subscribe. And once again, from me to you, toolpip and, uh, and good night and goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.